The surprise of the week is indeed the retirement of Australian tennis star Ashley Barty at a mere 25 years. And that just a couple of months after winning the Australian Open and while she remains the world's number one tennis player. What a contrast to our political leadership across parties and across different states where we have senior leaders clinging on to their positions in parliament, in assemblies, in their parties, virtually all their lives. But first, a little bit about Ash Barty. She may be all of 25 years and a few months, but she'd already spent more than 20 years of her life in tennis, starting playing tennis at the age of four in Brisbane. 15 career titles, including a Wimbledon, French and Australian Open singles titles, 121 weeks as the world's number one tennis player since June 2019, $24 million in earnings. And in between, she finds time to take two years off tennis to play cricket in the Australian Big Bash League. In spite of all that, Ash Barty feels she has other things to do in life, other dreams to chase. So unlike our politicians who can only think of doing one thing all their lives, serving the people of India. But I know that the time is right now for, for me to step away and chase other dreams um, and, yeah, and to, to put the rackets down. The parties of the world may have multiple dreams, but our politicians are singularly devoted to the welfare of all Indians, pulling them out of poverty, ensuring roti kapda or makan to everybody, getting them bullet trains, a $5 trillion economy and much more. And sometimes, just to ensure that fellow Indian citizens do not lose out on the services, they even contest from two constituencies, just in case. Comparing tennis and politics is like comparing perishable apples and long-lasting coconuts. But it still reveals a few things. Like sportsmen have to achieve their targets within very short time frames, while politicians can make timeless promises and get away with them. The average age of a Lok Sabha MP is 54 years, not too bad compared to the global average of a parliamentarian, which is 53 years. But a breakup of the age categories of the Lok Sabha members is not as encouraging. To start with, the average Indian is only 28 years, bursting with ambition, aspiration and an appetite for achievement, but is governed by the average Indian lawmaker who is 54 years. The PRS legislative research statistics show the age gap between India's youth and its MPs. Only 12% of India's Lok Sabha MPs are below the age of 40, meaning 88% of India's Lok Sabha MPs are over 40 years. Why is that jarring? Because India has the largest number of youth and millennials, with 65% of the population of India being under 35 years. Only 1.5% of Lok Sabha MPs are in the 25 to 30 age bracket, while more than half of India, or more than 700 million Indians, are below the age of 30. In other words, only 1.5% of MPs are drawn from the younger India below 30, while 98.5% of India's MPs are drawn from the older India. A definite mismatch for a country like India, which has an urgency to harvest its demographic dividend. In the matter of senior citizens taking decisions for a youthful population, India resembles Africa. Africa has the youngest population in the whole world, with a median age of only 19 years, but there are 17 African countries where the leaders are over 70 years. The oldest of them being Cameron President Paul Bia, who is 89 years. In contrast, 14 European countries have leaders who are below 50 years. Now, how does a youthful country like India come to have so many senior leaders, like the average age of the Narendra Modi cabinet being 60 years? Well, it starts right at the point of choosing candidates. For instance, in the 2019 elections, both the BJP and the Congress chose only 10% of their candidates who were below 40 years. Obviously, then we can't expect many MPs to be below 40 years. To come back to Ash Bharti, what she has demonstrated is, one doesn't have to be desperate to keep repeating one's achievements and instead try and experience other things in life. Imagine if an AK Antony, who became India's youngest chief minister at the age of only 36 years in 1977, had decided to walk off at the end of his term like an Ash Bharti. 
Instead, he decides to stay for another 44 years and quit parliamentary politics only this year. Imagine if only Sonia Gandhi could have quit the Congress presidentship in 2014 after her party received such a drubbing from the BJP. Instead, she stays, loses election after election and reaches a point where her party gets 2 out of 403 seats in Uttar Pradesh and then has to live to see people writing articles like this. Gandhi is in Congress. For God's sake, go! And where else but in India would you see somebody like a V.S. Achutanandan, CPM leader, being appointed as the Administrative Reforms Council Chairman at the age of 92 for five years? Yes, to suggest administrative reforms for five years when you're aged 92 to 97 years. In India, politicians, judiciary and bureaucrats can never stop serving people. After former Supreme Court Chief Justice P. Satashivam became Kerala governor, I get nightmares thinking sometime in future, a President of India or a Prime Minister of India may want to become a governor to continue serving people. The point is not that seniors are no good or youth are always superior. Just that it is an oddity when 98.5% of MPs of a country are above the median age of that country. Our MPs should be able to raise issues of the 21st century. Millions of Indians are jobless and hopeless. Unemployment is at a 45 year high. At 54 years, the age that most of our parliamentarians are, one can't really feel the pain of joblessness, can one? Gen Z is different. In the past, people climbed the Everest multiple times to prove something to somebody. Ash Barty feels winning the Wimbledon once is enough and not go the way of a previous generation like the Nadas, the Federers, the Jokovic's or the Navratilovas. Any takers for a one-time PM, one-time CM idea? Appreciate Ash Barty for taking that big decision at the age of only 25 years. I had to drag myself to quit the Economic Times at 50 years. This video salutes Sergei Stakovsky, Ukrainian tennis player who quit the game to join the Ukrainian army to defend his country. Stakovsky is a former world number 31 and famously defeated Roger Federer in a second round match at the Wimbledon in 2013. An astonishing end to what is arguably the biggest upset in Wimbledon men's history. Federer like Herbert Hoover said, older men declare war, but it is youth that must fight and die. An older man like Vladimir Putin, aged 70, decided to invade Ukraine, sadly forcing a 36-year-old tennis professional like Stakowski to trade his tennis racket for a gun. I don't believe that any of the Ukrainians are willingly doing it, but we don't have any choice. If we don't stand up, we don't have a country to do. 